Well, this old girl still got some pep. I uh, goosed it a little bit and did a little miniature burnout there for you in my shop. Still got pretty good power to it. Really, these didn't have all that much power, but anyways, welcome back to the wizard shop. This is one of Leo's cars. I've had several of his cars here while he's been away, been deployed, and he's actually back in the country now, and he's slowly getting his cars back. But before this one goes, I thought I'd do a video on it. Some of you have commented and said, hey, what about the Corvette? And so I'm gonna go over a few features about this car. We've done all the work that we're gonna to do to it. It's already been fixed. We're gonna go over some of the key features about this car and do a little Doug score deal, if you will. This is a 1982 Chevrolet Corvette. This is the last of the C3 series of Corvettes. Leo has had in his family, this car has been pretty much since new. I think it had 1800 miles on it when they got it. He brought this car here. I think it would run, but not very well. And it, it wouldn't stop. It had no brakes, zero brakes. It also had a fuel leak. The gas tank was dripping out of it, which could have been a disaster. So we're gonna go over some of the things we fixed. We also are gonna go over the some of the features of the car, some of the interesting facts about the car. One of the first things that we did on this car was to assess the brakes. And it needed a complete overhaul. The master cylinder, the calipers, the pads, everything. We just flushed the whole system, replaced every component because they was all bad. And now it has very good brakes. On the fuel tank, it was perforated. And it was, when I put my bore scope inside there to take a look, it was just corroded. and had been sitting for a long time and the tank was just really shot. It was not cost effective to repair the tank versus replacing it. So we replaced it with a brand new tank. One of the other issues he had was that the, the, the shift points and the shift pattern and I found that the TV cable that comes off the transmission was severely out of adjustment and I got that adjusted just right and it shifts perfectly now. This has the, the dreaded, a lot of people will say dreaded, the crossfire injection, the 5.7 liter Crossfire. It has twin little TBI units on it, and it's actually a reliable, and it's a good engine. It just didn't put out much power. A lot of people, oh, those are junk. I wouldn't have one of those. Or So I'm going to pop the hood, and let's take a look at it. So here you can see the twin throttle body units. And sit, like on a newer 85, 86, 87 TBI, you'd have twin pods over two butterflies. Well, they just, this is the, this is some of the first generation of TBI. It's got a single blade, single pod, and they sit adjacent to one another. It's got this weird plenum that really doesn't flow air very well, and it was one of the bad things about this motor is it just didn't flow very well. It, didn't, it couldn't put out the power. But it's got pretty good torque, low down torque, and as you saw when I did the little screech there on the tires. But really they were pretty reliable. They really didn't give a lot of trouble. They're just not, they're just not desirable in the hot rod community because of the power numbers. Uh, it has 200 horsepower. It's not very much. But it has pretty good torque down low. So here's the brand new master cylinder that we did the brakes on. It didn't really need anything on the engine. It runs great, there's no leaks. So we didn't have to do anything to the motor. So we'll put this back together. So this is a really cool car. But some of the some of the specs on it is when they came out, they made about 25,000 of the, these 82 Corvettes, only of which 6,759 were these collector editions, and this is one of them. They were about 20 grand when they were new. They're still actually worth about 15 grand today, but when they were brand new, you expect to pay 20 grand for one of these, which back then was probably quite a bit of money. As you can see, the paint's a little faded on this one. It's got age. I mean, this is a project for Leo, and he's going to get it back in excellent shape. We started with getting it running and driving, and we've done that, so 
Some of the rest will be down the road a little later. But he has a, his car is running and driving again. I'm sure his family is really happy about that. I'm going to go over some of the cool features that were part of this collector edition, and we're going to take a look at in the interior. A lot of the features, except for the uh, the transmission, this is th in this year, 1982. You couldn't get a manual transmission. If somebody says, I've got a collector edition, it's manual transmission, you can stop them right there and say you're a liar. Because they only came with the 700R4. That's the only transmission you could get in this year. I am suppose you could swap it out and change it out and modify it, but if you're trying to keep it stock, it's going to be an automatic. Uh, the, a lot of the other features on here are, are cosmetic issues, like it had a little bit thicker carpet. There were some power features, power locks, power mirrors, power windows, which weren't standard on a lot of vehicles at that time, but they are on this this one. It also has a nice gold tone leather seats. They're very actually very comfortable. It, it smells like leather very strong inside of there. It's got a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. After all the fame of Smokey and the Bandit, one of the options that you could also get on this car was a CB radio factory. And this was also the last year that you could get an 8-track radio. This one doesn't have the 8-track in it, but you could have got it on this vehicle. Another feature that was first on this car is really cool is the, the glass hatchback. You couldn't get that, even in this model year, you couldn't get that on the standard C3 Corvette. This was collector edition only. And then when they went to the C4 Corvette, that was standard. But this is the first year in Corvette history that you got the glass hatchback. As you can see here, it has the special Cloisonne emblems. It says collector edition on there. Then indicate that this was the collector edition model. It's got the silver beige paint with the pinstriping that was part of this package. And this would have been all white right here. Part of that package as well. It's got these aluminum turbine style wheels, they call them turbine wheels. That was part of the package as well. It's got this decal here as well. It kind of fades to the back. It's got the removable bronze T-tops. That was also part of this package. One thing it could use as a future repair for, to continue along the repairs on this car would be a, a new windshield. As you can see, it's cracked. There's, a, there's several little things this car needs. It's got a few body issues and obviously, obviously the paint issue. But that's all body shop work or windshield, windshield guys come out and do that. For its age, it's actually in pretty good shape. It runs and drives like a new car. It just has cosmetic issues. I think it's a pretty cool car. I really like it. I've really enjoyed working on Leo's cars and having his cars in the shop. You've seen the Prelude, you've seen the, the Viper, the repairs we did on it. And I didn't show any repairs on this one, but I'm just showing you the car before it's gone. I thought you guys would like to see it, see, hear about some of the features and where, what the story is on this car. The last car that we have that will be in the shop is the Lamborghini Murcielago that's his. It doesn't need a lot of major work, just some fluids and plug, a tune-up and some interior work. And we'll be doing a video on that. Uh, but this is the third car in the in the collection of cars he had here. And any of the uh, videos that you've seen, some tools that I use that you thought could be useful. We have an Amazon affiliates page. You can purchase tools there. We also have uh, t-shirts, mugs. We also have decal stickers now. You can click the link below and purchase those. So, well, it's the end of the day, and I'm ready to head home. And so again, thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, you like the content, tell some buddies about it and help me out. We hit that 100,000 subscriber mark. So again, thanks for watching.